To achieve a profitable controlled grazing system, producers should first decide whether they'll set stocking rates for a given land area or adjust land area to a given number of animals. Generally, producers beginning a controlled grazing system should start with a single pasture and develop management expertise for handling that pasture before they go on to develop additional systems for other pastures. Factors that need to be considered when establishing stocking rates would be animal size and what stage of production they're in. For example, lactating cows and ewes will consume more forage per day than the same animals of that species during maintenance. Most cows will eat somewhere between three and three and a half percent of their body weight in dry matter when lactating, while the ewes will eat three and a half to four percent of their body weight per day. Besides body size, other factors, such as the quality of forage available, also affect how much a grazing animal will eat per day. As pasture plants reach maturity, their nutritive value decreases rapidly. This decreased nutrient quality slows the rate of digestion and the rate of passage through the digestive tract. The goal of controlled grazing is to always present the animals with high quality, highly nutritious, and digestible forage. Bite size is another factor that affects how much and how quickly an animal would consume its daily nutritional intake. The size of an animal's bite is a function of the animal's body size as well as the density of forage. Forage that is quite sparse or extremely short makes it very difficult to get a large bite. Therefore, the animal must take more bites per minute to consume forage at the same rate. Under a controlled grazing situation, a good forage height can be maintained so that each potential bite contains a maximum forage amount. It's important to realize that, in general, animals graze approximately eight hours per day. They'll spend a large proportion of their remaining time regurgitating and ruminating on the feed they've already consumed. Animals also spend time during the day resting, as well as traveling to and from water, salt, and mineral sources. A second major factor which determines stocking rate would be pasture productivity. Productivity can be assessed by first analyzing the soil productivity through corn suitability ratings. Obviously, ground that can support 150 bushel corn yields has a much higher productivity potential than other ground which can only support corn yields of 80 bushels. Pasture productivity can also be affected by the specific forage species present in the pasture. Most pastures in Iowa, which have not been adequately managed, are primarily unimproved bluegrass pasture. Bluegrass has less than 50% of the productivity of brome and other tall, cool season grasses. The long-term goals of the grazing program is another factor producers should consider when establishing stocking rates. If the grazing season is only going to last from early May through the end of June, Stocking rates can be extremely high at more than one animal unit per acre. However, if the grazing season is to run from early May through late September, residue must be left during the high growth portion of the grazing season to allow for the reduced growth during the summer slump. Currently, many producers are trying to implement grazing seasons from May through January, which requires stockpiling forage. This stockpiling may be in the form of hay meadows which do not have a second cutting harvested, or paddocks which are not grazed at all during the growing season, or more likely, paddocks which are not grazed in August and September and allowed to let forage growth accumulate for early winter grazing. Paddock size and numbers relates to the stocking rates and the lengths of the grazing intervals. Paddock size and paddock number are directly interrelated. The more paddocks in the system, the smaller the paddock size needs to be. In a six paddock rotational system, which allows for optimum rest and harvest efficiency, animals will generally graze a single paddock for approximately five to six days. 
To calculate the forage available at each turn in the rotation, multiply the forage height by 200 pounds per inch. This would provide a baseline for establishing paddock size. The animals grazing, 1,200 pound lactating cows, for example, will each eat 3% of their body weight, or 36 pounds of forage per day. Let's say we have 2,000 pounds of standing forage, and we'd like to harvest 50% of that in this grazing cycle. Dividing 1,000 pounds of forage we want to harvest by 36 pounds per head gives us 27 cow days per acre per grazing interval. This figure will give us the total cow grazing days in this cycle, and if we assume we're going to rotate the cows every six days, we can divide the total grazing days by six, and that would establish our stocking rate. Therefore, we would stock the cows at four and a half cows per acre in the paddock being grazed. Iowa Extension Livestock Specialists have a computer spreadsheet to assist you in calculating the size of the paddock and stocking rates required for establishing controlled grazing systems. The next factor which affects the size of the paddock is the size of the grazing herd. An operation that typically runs 40 lactating females in a group does not require nearly the paddock size as a grazing group of 200 producing females. The last factor that affects paddock size and paddock number is paddock rotation frequency. If labor resources on the farm are short, rotating animals on a weekly basis may be the maximum time commitment available to the grazing system. However, if high animal output per acre is the objective of the operation, you may need to consider rotating on a daily or half-day basis. Grazing research indicates that the longer animals are in a specific paddock, the lower their intake becomes. Fresh grass is the key. With increased time in a paddock, there is increased trampling and soiled forage from defecation, urination, and trampling, all of which reduces the palatability and therefore the intake of this forage by the herd. The growth rate of the forage is an additional factor which affects the number and size of paddocks needed. Forage growth is not uniform through the growing season. Therefore, paddocks could be much smaller during the early part of the growing season, but need to be enlarged in July and August. Since many of us don't want to be building fence all summer, we can run more rapid rotations when the grass is growing fast with less rest time between grazing intervals. Extra paddocks for summer grazing can be hayed early in the growing season. This harvested hay can be merchandised as a cash crop, held in reserve in case of drought, or stored for winter feed. As animals gain in size, stocking rates need to change. Animals such as stockers will increase in weight and will consume more forage, which needs to be accounted for in late season stocking rates. Lactating cows and ewes have nursing calves and lambs, which are growing, and as the season progresses, they get larger and will consume ever increasing amounts of forage themselves, which increases the stocking rate and therefore may increase the paddock size or number required. Now that we've covered the various factors involved in determining stocking rates and paddock size, we'll briefly outline the steps to follow when starting your controlled grazing system. You can either use herd size or pasture size as a starting point. In most cases, pasture size will be the best starting point because pasture size is generally more fixed, while herd size is fairly easy to adjust. Begin by determining the number of grazing days, plus the number of rest days for each interval. Generally, a paddock is grazed from two to seven days and then rested for 20 to 40 days. In this example, we've selected a five-day grazing cycle and a 30-day rest cycle. These numbers added together are then divided by the number of grazing days. In this example, five. This tells us that we need seven paddocks to graze each for five days and then give each a 30-day rest. If our pasture size is 70 acres, we'll have seven 10-acre paddocks. To determine herd size in this example, we start with 200 pounds of forage per inch of forage height. If our pasture average is 10 inches tall, we'll have 2,000 pounds per acre times 10 acres, or 20,000 pounds of forage. Using the general rule of not grazing more than 50% of forage height, we see that there's 10,000 pounds of forage to be eaten in one five-day cycle. If each cow eats an average of 36 pounds per day, 
Our 10-acre paddock system can handle 27 animals. To use herd size as the controlling factor, simply do these calculations in reverse. When establishing a controlled grazing program, it's important to consider the unique behavior of grazing animals. Foraging animals tend to graze in a circular pattern. Therefore, the closer to exactly square in shape paddocks are, the more uniform the grazing of all forages in the paddock will be. As animals are moved, it's important to remember that they have a hierarchy status within a management group with leaders, followers, and subordinates. Great panic and conflict arises if subordinates are forced into the middle class or leader group. An example of a social event is the movement to and from water on a daily basis. If possible, all grazing systems should have a water source in each paddock. This reduces the amount of time animals spend away from their foraging traveling to water. It also reduces the need for large water holding capacities at the watering site since the animals are not all drinking at one time. Grazing animals show distinct patterns of grazing on a daily basis with the largest and longest grazing activity being just after sunrise. The second largest grazing activity occurs in the late afternoon until about sunset. How much animals graze during the day depends on the forage quality and quantity available, along with environmental conditions such as temperature. During extremely hot portions of the year, animals will tend to do more nighttime grazing. Research has demonstrated that grazing animals will have the highest intake the first day they're in a paddock and will have declining intakes each subsequent day. With this information in mind, producers may want to increase the number of paddocks to improve animal intake and subsequent performance. In many situations with controlled grazing, electric gates are used for the easiest movement of animals from one paddock to the next. These electric gates should be highly visible so the animals feel comfortable moving through them. The more frequently animals are rotated, the fewer problems electric gates present for them. Additionally, insulated cable used to transfer power from each side of the gate should be buried because in many situations it may actually create a visible barrier to animals moving through gate openings. Seasonal dairy operations create unique constraints upon the grazing system. In these situations, animals must travel twice daily to and from the milking parlor. Ideally, the parlor should be centrally located within the grazing area. However, most people aren't going to build new parlors when starting a rotational grazing system. The need for supplemental feed, which is significantly different from typical nutritional programs in confinement dairy operations, is another consideration of forage-based dairy operations. In a forage-based system, Cows may not be able to consume adequate amounts of supplement in the parlor during milking and therefore must have access to feed bunks in dry lot prior to being returned to the pasture. In some dairy operations, cows are grouped by level of productivity, which for a forage-based operation would require several pasture systems, all of which must have access to the milking parlor. Managing reproduction in a controlled grazing program can be quite simple. However, if artificial insemination is a management tool currently being practiced, it is important that animals are able to be moved during the breeding season to a centralized AI chute. The use of natural service works quite well, however. In many cases, reproductive rates will be improved under controlled grazing programs because of closer association between males and females. Additionally, females should be in improved body condition and nutritional status with earlier breed back dates and more likely to stay on a 12-month calving interval. Control of internal parasites is a high priority under intensive grazing situations. In most cases, older stock will be less severely impacted by intensive grazing programs because their nutritional level is improved and thus they're more able to combat the negative effects of internal parasites. Young stock, specifically animals less than a year old, may have increased parasitism problems due to the stocking density at any one time. Many producers believe that rotational grazing is a deterrent or an effective parasite control program. However, infective larvae can survive on pasture for several months. Rotating animals does not guarantee pastures are free of internal parasites if they've been previously grazed. The only known method by which rotational grazing will control internal parasites is through the use of hay meadows as 
between paddocks in the summer months, or an annual rotation between animal species grazing the system each year. We use rotational grazing because you simply get more out of it. The more you squeeze it, apparently, from the research that's done here on the CRP farm and other places, uh, the better your management is, the, the more harvest you get, uh, the better the financial results. We're promoting that we can get way more uh, uh, profit, net profit per acre from a grazing acre if, if we allow that forage to rest at different intervals through the year. And we typically look at a, at least a 30-day grazing period. As compared to continuous grazing, um, we're seeing a, a substantial increase in productivity by being able to, you, to, uh, to manage that forage, and, and we manage the forage this way instead of letting the cattle manage the forage.